Did you just turn it on, son? Okay, go ahead. Raise it up. We'll give him a minute. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, we just in the room have done a Lion's Army roar call. Praise the Lord. So those of you that just joined us by live stream, welcome. We are so glad that you are here, that you are watching us today. The Spirit of God is in the room already. I mean, we can feel it. We're jazzed. We're jacked up in the Spirit of God. I tell you what, the glory of God is here. I feel it. I feel it within my bones. I feel it within my spirit. I feel it all over me. There's just something that's come upon me as soon as I stood behind this pulpit. And it's like, devil, you lying thing, you. You tormenting, deceiving, enemy of righteousness. No, we stand against you. You have lost. We have won. We tear you a new one in the spirit. Thus far, no more. This is it. We have drawn the line in the sand. And we will stand against all of the things. And I have some things that I want to share with you in a few minutes that the Spirit of God spoke to me to keep you strong. But we did a Lion's Army roar call in the studio. And so I want to do one right now. Those of you that are on the live stream. How many of you are part of the Lion's Army? I call for a roar call right now. That you would roar in the spirit. Let us know you're part of the Lion's Army. Because I'm going to speak to you today. Some things that will be very encouraging. Very faith filled. I don't know how long it's going to last today. If it goes 30 minutes, we're going to praise the Lord. If it goes for three and a half hours... In the studio, we're going to call in pizza. But we're just going to let Jesus have his way today, pure and simple. So give me a roar call. I love that because uh, I was calling for a roll call. And then uh, about a week ago, week and a half ago, one of the partners uh, wrote and said, roar call. So we're roaring in the spirit today. Praise God. You know, in the world we shall have tribulation. Be of good cheer. The scripture says, Jesus himself, his words. For I have overcome the world. You know what? I'm just going to be flat honest with you. I don't know any other way of doing it. But I am absolutely trying to choose my words to be careful, upset, tired, sick of, and no, those are not bad confessions. I'm telling you of all of the crap that's going on in the world today. Aren't you? And I'm tired of the laziness of Christians who won't do anything about it. Won't stand up for Jesus Christ and for righteousness in the world today. Well, as I was praying, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. And he said, I want to give you seven urgent instructions to share with the people. And so I give those seven urgent instructions to you. Before I do, I want to read one passage in Acts 13. The first two verses. Now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manaen, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, what do you think happened? You got any idea? The Holy Spirit said... Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Sometimes we read those things and just skip over some of the more important elements of it. Okay, they were praying and then a word came somehow they're supposed to separate Barnabas and Saul. It says, the Holy Spirit said. The Holy Spirit speaks. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. The Holy Spirit 
has the ability to communicate. He is in charge of the communication and transportation system of heaven. It's his job, Jesus said in the book of John, to reveal and transmit all things to us that are heaven meant for us on earth. He reveals those things. He communicates. He speaks in so many different ways. He speaks by the still small voice. He speaks sometime with a more authoritative voice. He speaks within our heart. I've heard him speak in a way that seemed audible. He speaks in visions. He gives us part of his language. The language of the spirit is visions and dreams whereby you see things in the Spirit and they communicate. He also speaks to us by the revelations that just come to us and we're reading the Scripture and it just comes alive in our heart. There's inspiration, there's revelation, there's something there. It just takes a hold of us. We can see it. It's now a part of us. It's like this bomb of revelation explodes and the DNA of God's holy word becomes part of us. It explodes inside of us. It doesn't do damage. It just circulates throughout our being and becomes part of who we are. And then we have the understanding and revelation of things that he has created for us. The Holy Spirit speaks. We find that the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts, when he was working, many times had manifestation of angels. Angelic activity comes and reveals. All of these things are the Holy Spirit speaking to us. The Holy Spirit speaks. I thank God that the Holy Spirit can speak. I'm going to tell you what. I was raised in the Southern Baptist denomination until I was 19 years of age when I received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. My entire family did. I'm talking about my parents uh, and, you know, brothers, sisters. We all received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Uh, a miraculous time, you know, during the charismatic renewal. And at that point, we heard him so many times. You, you couldn't talk about the Holy Spirit. In the Southern Baptist Church at that time. I'm telling you the truth because that was my experience. Your experience may be different. But you know at that particular time they didn't want you. I mean we received the right hand of fellowship because we accepted Jesus uh, in joining the church. But as soon as we spoke in tongues they gave us the left foot of fellowship right out the front door. And, uh, and so you know God bless them. I'm not denigrating them and their relationship with Christ, but they completely denied the speaking of the Spirit of God in a way that could be applicable to the life of the believer and to the church today. And so I tell you what, being baptized in the Holy Spirit was, aside from receiving Jesus as Savior, the most important event in my life. It changed me forever and for the better. Praise God. But the Holy Spirit speaks. How did he speak? We don't know all of the details in this particular encounter, but we do know they heard him. They obeyed him because they recognized he has the ability to speak. Do you recognize that the Holy Spirit can speak into your life? Do you recognize that he has a voice? That he uses all the languages of the spirit, which are, like I said, visions and dreams. They're audible. There's uh, just the knowing that can happen on the inside of us. Do you know that it comes through prophecy as people are overcome by the spirit of the living God and they begin to speak by inspiration of him? All of these different ways. We have to be a church. We have to be a people, not only of the Bible, of this book right here, but we also have to be people of the Spirit of God who can not only hear the voice of God through His Holy Word, but also hear the revelation of that by the Spirit as He gives us understanding and personal direction. Now, I think I camped on that Enough at this particular point to lead into what I wanted to say to you. The Holy Spirit spoke to me. 
just as sure as anything, he spoke to me. And he said, I want you to give seven urgent instructions to the body of Christ. As I give these, I know that it's not only in this room and things that you might write down. On the live stream, there'll be a lot of people who will be listening. I pray that this video reaches out, uh, even when it goes on demand, to people all around the world. You know, when we do a lion's roar call, we have people uh, who just about every state in the United States and probably about a dozen different countries who respond at any given time. And it just moves all around the world. So what I'm saying is the Spirit is speaking. So here it is. This is bold of me, very bold of me. When I say I give you these seven urgent instructions, it is the Holy Spirit speaking. He not only spoke them to me, but he is using me to speak them to you. So I want you to hear them. Lion's Army. They're for anybody. But I have been speaking mostly to Lion's Army warriors recently. By the leadership of the Spirit of God. I speak to believers I love every believer. If you know Jesus Christ, wonderful. But the Lion's Army are those who I've, I've said recently have enlisted. It's like you can be a citizen of the United States, but that doesn't make you a part of the military. You have to enlist. Being saved doesn't necessarily make you a part of the Lion's Army. You have to enlist. And what is enlisting when it comes to Jesus? It's saying, yes, Lord, I will rise with you. I will take a stand with you. I will hear the lion of Judah's roar, and I will run to the battle, and I will bind and I will loose. I will intercede. I will use my third heaven authority. I will pray in faith and in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because I make a difference. You're not just sitting back on my blessed assurance, my salvation, and just watching, you know, the enemy just come in and just render havoc in everybody's lives around me or in my nation or in the world. No, I stand. Stand up for the challenge. Praise God. Lion's Army. If you answered the roar call, I'm speaking to you today. Number one. The Holy Spirit said, set a guard over your family. These are applicable to you today. Because of what's coming down the pike. There's trouble in the earth. There's trouble in the land. In our nation. The strife. The violence in the atmosphere. The violence in the natural realm. There's probably not anyone that is listening to me today saw these things really coming. Really expected them. Being a prophet, I've been amazed even at some of the things that have occurred. The Lord said this, number one, set a guard over your family. The Holy Spirit did. What do you mean by that? Parents, whether you're a single mom, whether you're a single dad, whether you're a mother and a father, uh, whether you have adult children or whatever, take the position to be the guard over your family spiritually. The enemy hates your guts because you belong to Jesus Christ and he wants to tear your family up. And there are many of you that would say, yeah, man, he's sure been trying. Maybe he's been trying for a long time. But I'm telling you, today, this day, that the Lord is saying it's going to increase. You thought it was bad because of the political and the sociological kind of uh, uh, strife and stuff that was going on over the past six years in America. I'm telling you. 
the Holy Spirit said that it's going to get worse. He said, guard not only your heart, but guard your family. Guard your family. I'm going to speak to you men, husbands, fathers. It is up to you to rise to become the priest of your family. And being the priest means that you accept the responsibility, the spiritual responsibility given to you by God to keep that stuff out of your family. I'm talking about strife. Stay out of strife. Walk in love. Don't just mamby-pamby. And don't just sit back and say, well, you know, that spiritual stuff I leave to my wife. Take your position. Not a tyrant, not domineering. Take your position. It is up to you. If you are a single mother and you do not have a father in the home, then it falls upon you. And the Lord's grace is there to help you in that endeavor. It's up to the parents. You hear what I'm saying? Set a guard over your family and do it now. I pray for you that the Holy Spirit will root out whatever tentacles and roots that he has already made some inroads in. And if you're having problems with your kids, if there's some marital difficulties going on right now, then heed the call to say, I refuse to be a part of that. Now, please, please understand me. This is not a condemnatory thing. It is a challenge to rise up in the grace and the power of God and to be who he created you to be and to do the responsible thing in your position. That's what I'm saying. So that's number one. It's very important because the enemy is coming after your family. Well, pastor... Prophet Mike, he always comes after my family. He's been doing it for 20 years. I understand that. I'm telling you what the Spirit said today. Don't rationalize and squirm your way out of anything. He who has ears to hear, hear what the Spirit is saying. Number two, the Holy Spirit said, Sheep, don't be afraid to find new grass. Let me unpack that a little bit. There are many of you that are watching right now who for at least some time have been by habit and by some kind of religious hold been spending most of your time eating old grass, old revelation. in groups that religiousize things and try to steal your power and what Jesus has for you. The sheep are escaping. When sheep get through the pen that they've been held in, some of you are going to interpret that as a ministry or a church that you have been going to and if the spirit of god leads you to that then i don't care that's you take it you listen to the holy spirit but what i'm telling you is that the lord said that when the sheep get out of the pen and they find a new pasture they find new grass then it's easy for them to get so fat they can't get back into the pen don't be afraid of that. I'm not telling anybody what to do. Don't write me and say it's all your fault, Mike. <laughs> you told me to do something, XYZ, and I did it, and they all got mad at me. I'm not telling you anything other than 
the Holy Spirit said, don't be afraid to find new grass. You need inspiration. You need new revelation. You cannot live the rest of your life on old revelation. We must go on, particularly in the way that applies to today. New revelation, new revelation, new revelation. Say that with me. New revelation. Hallelujah. So, Lord, I pray also for these people, Lord, for new revelation to come, that the Holy Spirit, the divine teacher of the church, will lead them into new things. Lord, I want new revelation that fits and conforms with the Holy Word of God but also with the spirit that is within me. Praise God. Number three, he said, don't get religious. Tell the people, don't get religious. He said, put your religion detectors up and look around where it's trying to sneak in. Religion is trying to keep the word of God without revelation. Religion is man's search for God without relationship. Religion is form. It's doing something because you were trained to do it rather than led by inspiration of the Spirit of God to do it. There's a religious spirit that is there. And you know, I mentioned this, I think, a couple of weeks ago, is that part of my job is to knock those religious cows in the head and grind them up into hamburger. They don't do you any good. I know. I preached in India before. I went with my good friend, uh, Augustine David, mighty man, ambassador for Jesus Christ, to his home nation and preached. I watched all of the sacred cows roaming the streets, eating the people's foods, and defecating on their properties. And that's what religious spirits do to believers. They eat your food. They gobble it up so that you don't have it. And they defecate in your land. Now that's pretty strong and blunt, isn't it? Am I, did I... Tell the truth. Yes. 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 She knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Don't get religious. Stay free. At the moment you find yourself and pressures coming in on you and attempting to mold you into a certain behavior or mindset in, in order to feel... That that's the only way you can please people around you or get God to love and to accept you and bless you. Something's wrong. At least check it out. What's forcing me into this place? I will not be forced. I will not conform. I will walk in the liberty of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because what happens is those religious spirits come in and they try to shut the lights off in your heart. Man, the Holy Spirit hits you and you dream big. And then religion comes along and cuts you off at the knees and says, don't dream at all. Number four, live and walk in the glory. The Holy Spirit said, live and walk in the glory. Do you know that you were created to live in the glory of God? Let's talk about the glory. I did a live stream last night on the glory of God. The glory of God is the manifest presence of the Holy One, of God Himself. Sometimes we call it anointing. Sometimes we say, He touched me. Sometimes we feel things as the Spirit of God begins to come upon us. 
Sometimes we see miraculous manifestations. But all of those things are manifestations of the glory of God. Because everywhere that God goes, by the Spirit, something happens and changes. And that manifestation is part of His glory. The glory of God is not just in heaven right now in the throne room. I know, I've been there, I've seen it. I've seen the glory. I've seen the rainbow glory. I've seen it. All the colors and the sounds and all of the things in heaven. I've seen it in visions and dreams. For years I've seen the glory of God come into congregations because C.K. and I have been some of those just wild and crazy people and just believed God. And for over four decades, we preach, and all of a sudden, what is, is sometimes referenced in the Old Testament as a Shekinah glory of God, the cloud, cloud that would come in and, and fill the tabernacle, and the priests couldn't stand. And we see the glory just begin to roll in the Spirit. Just like Elisha, he said, open the eyes of my servant so he can see the chariots of fire. The Holy Spirit opens your eyes so you can see what's happening and the glory rolls in. And people weep and cry. People are filled with the Spirit. People dance. People fall on the floor. And just under the power. And just all manifestations of that glory. That glory of God. You can live in. It's in your house. It's in you. It's there for you. It's in this service right at this particular point. It's going across the video, the airwaves, the live stream, and hitting people at this particular moment. You know what I'm talking about because you feel the anointing. You feel as if God was right there with his hands, his arms wrapped around you, touching you, strengthening and encouraging you and blessing you. There are healings manifesting now. Live in the glory. Walk in the glory. Because the glory is the safe place of God. It's abiding in the shadow of the Almighty. It's the cleft of the rock, as it were. It's the place that regardless of circumstances around us in the natural realm. That we can be safe and secure. And loved and directed. All of those things going on. Live in the glory. And there is a manifestation of that glory that is, you know, as the Bible says... That the knowledge of the glory of the Lord shall cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. The knowledge of it. It's not a head knowledge. Oh, I see it over there. You'll never see it over there. Unless you experience it, you won't see it. But when you experience it, when your eyes are open to it, then you can see. And that glory of God moves. And it touches us. The Bible talks about the weight of the glory. The weight, it has weight. The word glory is also associated with wealth and gold and riches and things. In the spiritual and even the natural realm. It's the glory of God because when God shows up. Something is going to be affected. Something will change. And it's not him. It's something in us. It's something in the room. His glory. His glory is here. And it's time for people. If you're part of the lion's army, learn to live in the glory and walk in that glory. Number five, 
the Holy Spirit said, honor God's word above all things. Honor God's word. Do you understand that the word of God is the grid whereby everything in his kingdom, including us and our salvation and our lives, exist? What we operate by? Do you understand that God's word has a spiritual DNA and potency to bring itself to pass? Do you understand that when the word of God comes forth, it produces that which it was sent to accomplish? And when we are people of the word and we stand on the word, how can we fail? It is when we begin to shift our eyes off of the Word of God and think about the situation that's coming and the pressures that it puts upon our lives. What should we do when we get into carnal reasoning? When we begin to agree with those that are around us that are attempting to pressure us or entice us in a different direction. At that point... Then the enemy, according to Mark 4, has come in the word that was sown and that you're standing on and gobbled up the seed or applied, like I said, temptations and tribulations to either entice or to pressure you off of the word and give up on the word. It is those who will resist those temptations, who will say no to the word of the world and say the word of God says just like Jesus, to Satan himself during his temptations. When we say that, fruit comes. Fruit comes. The lion's army lives on, feeds on, revelation of the holy word of God and stands on it in faith. And it's not a, we'll try this out for a while and see if it works. Oh, heavens, you better just go buy some more insurance. <laughs> Nothing wrong with insurance, but you know what I'm talking about. Where are you putting your faith? Honor God's word above all else. One of the things that I have said recently about this situation with the Israel-Hamas war in the Middle East, is that I see all kinds of Christians, because, you know, I'm out there and I hear things, and, and, and you get all kinds of responses from people. Man, we've been attacked for our stand for Israel, with Israel on this whole thing. And you listen to the... These are, I'm talking about Christians, even spirit-filled Christians, sending me videos with all kinds of conspiracy theories and I, oh my God, it just, I, sometimes I want to just scream at ignorance. You can have your opinion about what you feel is going on right now, but I want to know what the Word says. If you are not establishing things on what the Word of God says, then shut up. I don't know what got into me today, but I'm not through yet. You establish it. The Abrahamic covenant was to Israel forever, the Word says. The natural seed, the spiritual seed. I don't want to go any further down that road right now. Word of God. Word of God. Go to the Word. What does the Word say? There was a period of time in our ministry to where there were a lot of people coming to me for counseling. And I used to be a Christian counselor, a pastoral counselor, an abuse counselor, 
all these things. But I'm talking about outside that. It's like people just come and, and just all these questions. And I did two things. Now, just listen to me. This was not mean. This was spirit directed. I went to the Lord and asked him what to do. And he said, okay. He said, then tell the people. You give them an assignment to do two things. Number one is to pray in tongues over it. For 24 hours. Number two. Is to get into the word. And find out what the word says. About your situation. And then come and talk to me about it. 24 hours later. The phone would ring. And I would say hello. And they would say. Cancel my appointment. I heard from God. Okay. Well, just do that from now on. Praise God. Number six. Pray in tongues. The Holy Spirit said, Tell my people to pray in my languages. Let them pray in the Spirit. Pray in tongues. I'm going to come back to that in just a minute. I'm going to go on to number seven. The Holy Spirit said, Lion's army, roar with all your might. Roar with all your might. Now is the time. Take the stand. Be unshakable, unmovable. Roar with all your might. Meet every challenge head on. Every deception. Look it in the face. Every lie that's in your nation and in the world. All of the situations. And I'm talking a lot about uh, those bigger things that would be about your nation and about the world. But also it's about your own life. It's about your health. It's about your children. It's about all of these things that are very important to you. If they're important to you, they're important to God. And he cares about them. And he wants to be with you in helping you through those things. And he said, roar with all your might. People with authority walk in authority to be successful. Unsuccessful people who are washed who are tossed to and fro, who don't know what to do, who are constantly trying to figure it out and get people to help them. There's nothing wrong with help. You understand where I'm coming from at this point. Wishy-washy people are people who refuse to walk in authority. It takes as much time energy and decision to walk in authority as to not walk in authority but if you don't walk in authority then what's going to happen is it will come in and it will rob your time energies and decisions it will make the decision for you when you walk in authority you and the holy spirit Make the decisions. When you do not walk in authority, the world makes them for you. Who do you want to make your decisions? You choose. But roar with all your might. And when the Holy Spirit spoke that to me, I heard all of those things that I'm talking to you about right now. I heard roar. In other words, take the authority. Take the authority. Take the authority. I know what it's like. I'm just like you. I know what it's like to get tired. Or to not want to deal with something. Or just let it pass by this time. Or we'll see how it will just work itself out, etc. And I know what happens when I do that. Take your authority. But roar... It's like, man, you just have to become bulldogged determined. You're going to confront the enemy and 
all of those things in the spirit. Praise God in the name of Jesus. So lion's army roar. Lion's army rise up. Lion's army advance. Lion's army run with the vision. Lion's army run with the glory. Because the glory of the Lord is upon you. And will go with you in every place that you tread. It will back you up. Now I want to talk about tongues for a minute. I want to read one more scripture. I felt like the Lord said to just camp on this for a little while. The Holy Spirit. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit here today. He said just camp on this. I want you to look. Or you could. I'm going to read this scripture to you from Mark 16. This is the Great Commission. Jesus came. He's speaking to his disciples. And in verse 15 he says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You don't find any indecisiveness in that. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down on the right hand of God. And they went. They went out and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word through accompanying signs. Are you aware that Jesus is the one who introduced tongues in the Bible and to the church? It was him. Speaking in tongues is not found in any place in the Bible preceding that other than in shadow like the handwriting on the wall. Jesus is the one. Now what's interesting about that is that you have healing, protection, casting out demons. All of those are found in the Old Testament, the Old Covenant. When he spoke these words to his disciples, they didn't know what he was talking about. They had never seen those things. As they were with him in his ministry. What did they do by the authority that he gave when he sent them out? They healed. They cast out demons. They were divinely protected. All kinds of miracles. Jesus says, now, I'm going to add something to it. Speak in tongues. Speaking in tongues is a manifestation of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I said the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Not being baptized into the body of Christ. That's salvation. When you're baptized in the body of Christ, it's you being baptized in the element of Jesus' body. As a work of grace, which is salvation. But the Bible says there is also a baptism in the Holy Spirit. The element is different. Baptized in the Spirit. And with that Spirit baptism comes manifestation of a lot of things. But one of them is the ability to speak in tongues. And the word tongues there is a word that means inspired by the Spirit, but not intellectually learned. So what I'm going to tell you is that this is for the New Testament church. Along about the turn of uh, the century, right around the year 2000, there was a really a dry spell where teaching on speaking in tongues had diminished a great deal. I was very concerned about it, prayed about it, taught on it as much as I could. 
And I've noticed that recently that now it has been picking up. In some circles, it's still dry. People don't understand. But the lion's army understands speaking in tongues. Now let me tell you a few things that are the benefits of speaking in tongues. I'm going to give you about 18 points here. Number one, in Mark 16, verse 17, when you speak in tongues, it is a blessing of obedience because you are obeying Jesus. Well, if Jesus wanted me to speak in tongues, I'd just wake up one morning blurting it out. Kind of like if he wanted me to fly, he'd have given me wings. Jesus doesn't force you to do anything. It's by faith. You have to be receptive. Number two, Mark 16, verses 17 and 20. Jesus declared that he made it a sign of the New Testament believer's life. Boy, that's a sermon. Every one of these I want to go off for 15 minutes. I'll keep it down. You want to demonstrate a New Testament life? That's not disparaging or minimizing of, of people who are saved and don't speak in tongues. I'm not challenging their salvation. I'm challenging their unwillingness to manifest what Jesus told them should be there. Number three, Acts 2, verses 4, and chapter 10, verses 44 through, what is that? 46. It's an evidence of the baptism in the Spirit and a continual reminder of His indwelling presence because it's from Him, Him speaking through you. 1 Corinthians 12, 10. The gift of different kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues could never operate if believers didn't first pray in tongues. Do you realize that there's a difference between the two? I don't have time to teach on it, but I will mention this. In Paul's listing, 1 Corinthians 12 through 14, where he talks about uh, the gifts and about tongues a lot, he says that a message in tongues that's to be interpreted is God speaking to man. But your heavenly prayer language that you pray is you speaking to God. 1 Corinthians 14, verses 2. Your human spirit is praying directly to God. Now that's a good benefit right there. 1 Corinthians 14, 2 and Proverbs 18, 4. Wisdom is drawn from the wells of the Holy Spirit's knowledge. You know, it calls it mysteries. Paul said, how be it in the Spirit you speak mysteries. The word mysteries there, the Greek term mysterion, is talking about revealed secrets. Not stuff that's held up that nobody could know. It's stuff that's of the kingdom that is released for your benefit at the time to be revealed in your life. So in other words, when you pray in tongues, the Holy Spirit is praying for you through you. That's one form. One form of tongues. Divine mysteries. You're digging, you're drawing up from the wells of the Holy Spirit's knowledge, wisdom. 1 Corinthians 14.4 Your human spirit is edified, strengthened, and given spiritual understanding. 1 Corinthians 14.14 14. Tongues are not hindered by natural reasoning because this praying does not originate in the mind or the intellect. It originates in the heart of the Spirit. It is the Spirit of God within who is issuing and giving you the ability to speak and you are yielding your spirit and your tongue to speak those things into the atmosphere. Here's an important one. 1 Corinthians 14, 15 through 17. Anything that you can pray in English, or whatever your mother tongue is, you can pray in tongues. Did you know that? Anything you can do in English, you can do in tongues. 
by the Spirit's guidance. Oh, man, I love this stuff. I'm going to talk a whole lot more about it, but I'm going to get through these. Yeah. Number 10, 1 Corinthians 14. 16. It's a way of spiritual blessing, of spiritually blessing God and others. It says that you bless others when you pray in tongues. 1 Corinthians 14, 16b and 17. It's a way of giving thanks to God. It's a spiritual issuance springing out of a thankful, spirit-filled heart. In 1 Corinthians 14, 28. By praying within yourself during trying times, ungodly contaminants can be kept from seeding themselves in your heart. I do that a lot. You can pray in your own mind, under your breath, as it were, in your heart, and you can pray out loud. I encourage people all, all the time to pray out loud. I mean, you can pray in tongues. If you're sitting in the middle of a restaurant and you know there's spirit activity and stuff going on, you know, you're probably just going to pray on the inside. It's just as effective. But here's the thing about praying. If you're at home and you're praying and you pray out loud, if you pray loud enough in intercessory prayer for your ears to hear it, it creates a cycle of edification that begins to build in the spirit. And then you're using and projecting into the atmosphere those mysteries and those things of the spirit. Praise the Lord. Number 13. Romans 8, 26. It keeps your prayers scriptural and unselfish. <laughs> I don't know why I laugh about that, but it's like, duh. If God's praying, of course it's not flesh. Of course it's not wrong. I want him to pray through me all that he wants to. Romans 8, 20, 8, 26. The Holy Spirit helps you intercede for others, especially when you neither know what to pray for nor how to pray for it. We need to help. James 3, 8. It helps tame your tongue. And that flapping thing inside of your mouth needs tamed. Number 16, Jude 20. It builds you up on your faith, charging you up like a battery. Number 17, Isaiah 20, verses 11 and 12. Rest and refreshing come to your body, mind, and spirit. Now here's the last one. In Mark eleven twenty three and Luke eleven nine and ten, praying in tongue removes the tension between believe at the moment that you pray, and it shall come to pass, and ask and keep on asking. And it will be supplied to you. A lot of people don't understand how those two scriptures and seemingly different instructions work. How can I pray and believe, but yet I'm at that moment that it's done, but yet he says, ask and keep on asking. I don't have time to get into all that, but I'm just telling you this. When you pray in tongues, problem solved. So pray in tongues. Hallelujah. Now, those seven urgent things, I'm going to repeat them real quickly. The reason that they are urgent is the Holy Spirit just got all over me. And he said, he, he said this, is, this is now. This is something that has to be right at this point now. Tell them to do it. Number one, set a guard over your family. Number two, Sheep, don't be afraid to find new grass. Number three, 
Don't get religious. Number four, live and walk in the glory. Number five, honor God's word above all things. Number six, pray in tongues. Number seven, lion's army, roar with all your might. Stand on your feet with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord God. Praise you, Lord God. Praise you, Lord God. Praise you, Lord God. We are living in a time where the world needs to see the church of the Lord Jesus Christ rise up. In the geopolitical aspect of the world, it's like they're saying, would the United States stand up? What I'm telling you is that God is saying, the world needs us to stand up. And in standing up, he will back us up. He will be our rear guard. He's given us all of the armor of the spirit. The spiritual armor now for us to wage the warfare. But he said that as we do it and we face and we attack the enemy, he will be our rear guard. It's time. Hallelujah. It's time. Though people, as I'm speaking right now, I just heard this in the Spirit, that many of you are hearing it according to what's going on in your life. Right now, the Spirit of God is bringing revelation to you of how this applies and how you're to, to stand up in your own family, in your own life, in your own ministry right now and meet the challenge that is at hand and you can do it we are well able to take the land we are not going to cry we're not going to claim there are giants in the land giants so what take them down it's your land. And that applies to your family, your ministry. It also applies to your city and to your nation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands unto the Lord and say this with me out loud. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I receive... The word of the Holy Spirit. The instructions. They will set me free. Empower me. They are wisdom. For this day. I will set a guard over my family. I will not be afraid to find new grass. I refuse to get religious. I live and walk in the glory. I will honor God's word above all things. And I roar with all my might. And I will speak in tongues and all the languages of the Spirit. In Jesus' name. Devil, I take a stand against you. Thus far, no more. The line in the sand. Having done all the stand, I stand therefore. You have met your match. I will clean your clock. I will pull you down. Every stronghold, every deception, Every spiritual attack, I rebuke you in Jesus' name, and I cast you out of my life. Let God arise, and his enemies be scattered. Let God arise in who he created me to be, and what he has called me to do. 
He's given unto me the keys of the kingdom. I can bind. I can lose. Because of those keys. Greater is he that's within me. Than he that's in the world. I'm a new creation in Christ. I refuse condemnation. Guilt and fear. I refuse the deceptions of the enemy. I will only yield to the Spirit who lives on the inside of me, empowers me, leads and guides me. I'm part of the lion's army. And I roar! Roar in Jesus' name now! Yes! 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 Hallelujah! 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 Praise you, Lord God. Praise you, Lord God. Praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 Keep your swords sharp. Praise you, Lord. I'm just listening to the Holy Spirit for a minute. God is going to take care of you. When the medical system fails... God will heal and take care of you. When the financial system falters, God will take care of you. When the social structure has problems in America, God will take care of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we just pray. Among all of the circumstances in the world, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. You may be seated for a moment. And as you're seated... I heard the Holy Spirit. That's why I was just for a minute trying to catch exactly what he was talking about. And the Holy Spirit was saying, tell the people that there is an anointing upon you and CK and your ministry for supernatural finances. If they will believe, they will receive. Now there's two parts to that because of God's word and what you believe about God's word, but also whether you believe that the anointing is upon us. Now again, I told you that I'm being really bold today, but I have to. Because I understand these spiritual things. That anointing, the Lord just spoke to me and said, I will release into the people's lives who will believe it and who will accept and act on it. 
So that's what I'm saying right at this particular point. And you know, this is something that the Lord spoke, first of all, to my sweet wife, C.K. And she came to me with it. And I went to the Lord and he said, yes, it's there. Absolutely, it is there and I can feel it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an opportunity right at this moment to sow into the ministry and to sow into that anointing. And you can make a decision about it. But if you're smart, you will accept it and let that anointing come down upon you. Absolutely. So those of you that are watching by live stream, you can get in on this. Join us by going to our website. The link is in the description, but it's wordoflifeworldoutreach.org. And there is a secure donation page, and you can sow into the ministry for the profit's reward. But here's the thing. I'm, I'm not trying to get your money. I'm trying to get your money to you. I'm trying to get the anointing for supernatural finances and the power of God into your life. That's all I care about. Those of you in the room, you can make checks to Word of Life or Mike Thompson Ministries. And just give to the Lord. You know, the Holy Spirit just spoke to me. I'm going to take just two minutes to tell you this story. Many of you have heard it before, but it's very important. This kind of illustrates what I'm talking about. Uh, many years ago, I was in my car traveling to a, another state to preach a meeting. And I was driving down the interstate. And the interstate was a, uh, at that particular point, was not just straight. It was the one that I was on was, was windy. It was going over some mountains and different things. And suddenly, I just was taken away. I saw a vision. The Lord, I don't know if he just took me up out of the car. Uh, all I know is when it was all over, I'd navigated every corner and, and made it all the way to my destination. But he took me up in the spirit, and he, he gave this vision. And I saw a prophet standing there the lord said that's a prophet and a man of god somebody that was preaching that was ministering and there were a bunch of people gathered around kind of in a half moon around like this as he was preaching out and when he was through preaching and you could tell words of life important wonderful things were coming when he was through about half of the people then walked off and left they had heard the revelation but there were a bunch of people that stayed and they had also heard the revelation then I noticed that there was a tube that was coming out of the chest of every single one of those people just the symbolism that the Lord gave me that went and attached to the chest of the prophet and I asked the Lord what that was. And he said this. Those that heard the revelation and left will forget what manner of revelation that they heard. Those who stayed are the ones who chose a specific act of bonding to the prophet's revelation. And he said, those are the ones that sowed into that ministry. The others did not. And he said that when you physically, when you sow, you know, the scripture declares that the minister, the prophet ministers spiritual things and that the people then minister back with their own financial, their own normal, natural things. And it creates the cycle of blessing. And he said, those who created the bond... Because they believed the revelation. They believed in the prophet. They heard God in the prophet. 
They are the ones that it bonded to their hearts. And they won't forget it. CK and I do this very thing. We act upon the same thing. We do not just receive offerings into the ministry. We give offerings. We sow. We, I won't get into that. We sow a lot. We practice what we preach and we preach what we practice. We sow. But when we sow... We do that very thing. Lord, I'm sowing into that ministry because I feel led and because you said, but there's an anointing there. There's something I got to have in my life. I want that now. Hallelujah. So, with those words having been said, go ahead, listen to the Spirit of God and what uh, you would like to give right now. And do it by faith. But listen, listen, listen. The whole purpose of me going after this is for the release of the anointing for supernatural finances. Not just supernatural finances. The anointing upon your life for it. Okay? All right. Ushers, come on up, please. And I'm going to pray over it. Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, right now I pray. As I do, Lord God, I pray that those that bond with the revelation and the anointing and everything that is coming forth in this service today, that Lord God, in addition to that, those who are believing for it, Lord, the anointing for supernatural finances to be released in their life now, I pray for them Devil, get your hands off of their finances. I bind every pilfering, robbing, buffeting spirit in Jesus' name. But I release the Holy Spirit and the angels that administrate the wealth of the kingdom and how it flows in and brings the wealth of the earth into your people's lives. I pray for that and I release it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead. Go ahead, guys. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I do want to make that announcement that my book on Third Heaven Authority is available. Go to the link in, our, in the description on the video. You can order the book, but not only the paper form of the book, but the audible book, the audio book is now available. It was released last week. I got it myself. I've been enjoying it. It's kind of weird not being my voice. But uh, it's good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. I want everybody in the room right now to stand up and face the camera. People that are watching by the live stream, I want to minister to you right now and pray for you. We know that there are a lot of people that are watching and you have individual concerns and needs and things going on in your life. And Jesus cares about all of them and so do we. We care. In the spirit I know what a lot of them are because I can see, I can feel, I can hear. But there's so many of you that even if I don't, our hearts are with you. As we turn and as we raise our hands toward you, we want to pray for you. Father God, in Jesus' name now, Lord, bless your people. Bless your people. Bless them wherever they live, wherever nation they hail from. Lord God, they're part of the nation of God. And Lord, they have covenant with you. And Lord, you can protect them and provide for them. Lord, heal them. Lord, strengthen them. Lord, take care of their families. In the name of Jesus, let the glory and anointing of God come upon them now for every need met and to prepare them in going forth into their destiny, their future, 
the lion's army, tearing the devil a new one, the lion's army, the glory of the Lord upon them. Release in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you, Brian. Praise God. Those of you that are in the room, praise God. If you need ministry, come on up. I, if you would like to have hands laid on you, then I would like to lay hands on you. Now, what I'm going to pray for, and about right at this particular moment, is an umbrella anointing for boldness. That's just what I feel today, man, mixed in all this. When the Holy Spirit said, Lion's army, roar with all your might. I just want to pray for that boldness and the glory of God to be here in that manifestation. There are many needs that you might have. And if the Holy Spirit tells me to minister by prophecy, words of knowledge, or anything else, I will do that. But when I lay hands on you, just realize that everything is in the anointing. Whatever's in your heart, whatever directions 